Hi, I'm Audra Carter. I'm the host of Bridging the Gap radio and TV show, whose mission is to bridge multicultural gaps through honest, authentic dialogue with our community. Bridging the Gap aims to inspire and empower unity in our community. Welcome to Bridging the Gap, and today's Bridge Builder of the Month is Miss Jewel Canada Wynn. How are you? I am doing great. I, I know you have great. to be pretty surprised mm -hmm. about uh, being a bridge builder, and, I, and I'm, you may or may not know, and the audience may not know what a bridge builder is, so I figured that I'd put on my specs and tell you. A bridge builder impacts their communities through their examples, wisdom, and readiness to share and serve others. They are individuals who see the gaps existing between cultures and communities and who choose to make the effort to mend them. They have achieved great things for themselves and now are reaching back to help others attain their goals. That's you, Jill Kennedy kind of Wayne. Thank you. And thank, thank you so you. much for what you do yeah. in the community. Uh, I, I love the community. I love uh, the kids, many of the things that I do are with uh, young people. And I, I'm just, I know that if we do not invest in them, then we, as when we get older, our future is not as bright because they're gonna care for us. They're gonna, they're gonna take care of us and they're gonna take care of our country. And you know, um, when we have these segments and we're gonna talk about the many things you do, um, and what's going on in your life and the, the role you play in our community. So people will get to know a little bit uh, about you. It's really funny. I uh, uh, go around the community quite a bit, and uh, people say, you know, Jules kind of quiet. Mm -hmm. You know, she, she's very quiet in, in, in the council meetings. She's a dean. She's a mother. You're a grandmother. You're a member of, uh, what's the name of your church? Great Union Baptist Church. And who is your pastor? Oh, Pastor Michael Thompson. And all you? fired up. All fired up. All fired up. Our, our uh, church said it would be a church on fire for Jesus, but okay. a pastor on fire for uh -huh. the word with Dr. Michael and John. What do your church say? Our church has said we all fired up. Fired up. Fired up. We are reuniting, rebuilding, and, and we focusing on, on Christ and, and work in the community. So we're really happy he's been here with us uh, for about two years. Wow. And so we are really happy uh, with him. But getting back to you, um, you are born and raised here. Tell us a little bit about your uh, background. A little about me. I, I was born and raised in Century, Florida. Uh, there, my parent, my mother, my father passed, but my mother is still there. I have sisters that are still there, and I, uh, but Escambia County has been my home. Went to PJC, graduated from there, went into the Air Force, hmm. spent some time security police uh, there, enjoyed that. It was, uh, it was the great way to go. I would still do the same thing in, in that same way again. God knows, he, he knows what, what you need, and so, uh, that was good, and I got out of the military and uh, became an educator, and so now I'm a dean at Excambia High School as well, city council member, deputy mayor of the city of Pensacola. Wow, so you wear three hats. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Every day. Every day. So let's talk about the dean. Um, mm -hmm. What do you do as dean? We are the disciplinarians. You know, I had the student say, I, I called out that student name, and they stopped, and they said, oh, know my name. You don't supposed to know my name. I said, it is not a good thing that I know your name. And I know you from the back of your head. I said, <laughs> I said it's not a good thing, you know. But I'm, I'm a disciplinarian, but I also do a lot of other things with the kids at school. We do college tours uh, so that they can understand, you know, what's out there for them. I want to promote them and be a mentor for them. Uh, I have a club that's called UWA, and in fact, those members were volunteering at the Soul Bowl, uh, wow. Soul Bowl, so that they can go and get their volunteer hours. So I do those things, and, and I sing um, in the choir with 
50 to 75 <laughs> other beautiful voices so it can drown out mine. But, you know, I overall balance type life as well as, you know, I'm a grandma, but uh, all the children are grown and so therefore I have a loving husband who supports me and everything. So it, it balances out and he wants to, for me to, to achieve all the things that I want to do and so he's there ready uh, to support me. You know, you're really humble because you know I did my homework mm -hmm. um, and I talked to people about who you are and as much as they say you're a choir, you're really out there. You do a college tour every year. Can you tell us a little bit about that for children? Right. The college tour, I do uh, two types of tours. One is the historic black college tour because a lot of students don't realize the number of historical black colleges that are out there for them. And I tell students, there's a school for you. Right, and there we, is a school. There right. is a school for you. Uh, PJC is good uh, for your foundation. I went to PJC. UWF is good. I went to UWF. But there is a school for you somewhere. So we, we will do the historical black college tour on even years and on odd years. We do what we call the Bright Futures College Tour. And we would do nine colleges and universities in the state of Florida in four days wow. with as many as 50 high school students. Wow. Uh, and we would take students from all over the county. We've taken students from Northview all the way you know, down here in, into the city. So, and they learn a lot because when they get there, they will tell them, you know, uh, ninth grade is important. You know, you can't just get zeros and L's and fail ninth grade. We select and make our determination of whether or not you're going to go to college from your ninth and tenth grade year. Also, some students say, well, I want to go to Central, and, and they see 40,000 students, and then they realize, no, I may need to stay at PJC. I may need to do PJC for my two years. I may need to do UWF. That may be where I am right now. And so they really look at college life, and so I find that that's very uh, are very helpful to to with them. So. And you are very much involved in understanding the gap of uh, children who've never had parents to go to college, right? And then encouraging them because you're taking them on these college tours. Talk about Pensacola and their challenge with that. Yeah, th there there are many first time college uh, students who are going to college in their families for the first time. And because of the high poverty rate, sometimes our students feel that it's impossible. I can't do this, I right. can't do this. My, my rule is nothing is not an option. If you wanna go, you just tell me you wanna go. We're gonna make it happen. You and I working together, wonderful. we will make it happen. And so we do, we have fun doing it. Of course, kids are gonna be kids and they try to out slick the fox here. But you know, we're on them. We have great chaperones that go, gotten the support of my school and principal. So we, we, we think that that's a very positive thing for our students. Uh, you, and and I, it's amazing how much you do that people don't know, but I also know you, w when you're a dean, you help with the college tours. I understand you volunteer at the Baby Rattlers. Yes. Uh -huh. And in addition to that, you actually go to all the ball games and do concession. How yeah, do you I do the, time to do I that? I do the concession. I'm, I'm one of these little organizers, and this, I guess my military background structured this. And so um, I love the Baby Rattlers, and, I, and, and they're in my district. And McGee Field, of course, you know, is one of the best sports complexes in the area. All of uh, everyone that comes to play there loves it. And it had an overhaul. It's gorgeous. It is. It is. And that is one of the projects that's a success story that you can count those dollars that go into our neighborhoods when you look at, at that. So I go there and uh, Charmaine, uh, now Charmaine, uh, she is wonderful. Hey, man, she lives she on Sixth Avenue, so Charmaine. <laughs> <laughs> she, okay, wait, wait, she she got it going on. Okay, we she has us running <laughs> right down straight line. This is how it's gonna be, no nonsense, and we love her. And it's just great. You have Charmaine. You have to do, and of course. We honored uh, Mr. Albritton and Mr. McElway for their years. We have just so many great volunteers in Pensacola. Just the commitment on our community, there is just no better place to come and be than in the city of Pensacola. You know, uh, when someone asks to uh, put you in for a bridge building, I, I really like to do my research, and I do research over a year and sometimes two years. I, I just think it's amazing 
uh, that's just one hat, and you spent like maybe two or three minutes talking about that. And Jewel, I really want to thank you from our community for all the personal time you put in, not just being a dean, but being in our community and being a part of hands-on. And mm -hmm. I can't say that I see many people doing that and just doing it with so much joy. Okay, so I need you to put on, let's see which hat. Mm -hmm. uh, you are dean, and then you are a what? Then I am a council member, deputy mayor. Uh, tell us what's going on. There's lots of stuff going oh, on. Wait, wait, wait. Things we don't understand. I mean, I don't understand. I mean, uh, I know you guys have a new form of government coming oh, yes. up, and I oh, know yes. that it's exciting. Uh, that's a very exciting for Pensacola. Yes. A lot of people uh, went through the charter. Mm -hmm. um, I don't. I mean, I'm. I read it. I, I looked at the words, but. As a council person, it's your job to educate the community. Mm -hmm. Educate me. Well, just a little, it's, it's a little bit. The exciting thing is, is how it's going to transition with the, the mayor, who's the strong mayor, who has veto power, who sets agendas. But you also have that legislative body, which we will truly be as a council. But we, too, have agendas and initiatives that mm. we want to move forward. So it is just not the mayor having the agenda really? and the only agenda. The council has agenda. And then you have this one person right there that's gonna be president of the council. Really? Th to me, that's a very, very important position because that person is gonna be able to handle the council's agenda, be able to push forward agendas of the council as well, be able to you know coll collaborate with the, the mayor so that we can all find common ground and not find common ground because we have an opportunity as well to uh, veto what the the mayor the mayor has presented if we we have a problem and have full discussion on that. So this is going to be an interesting time for my young people and adults out there about how this is going to work. Uh, the system is, is going to work simply because and gonna, we're going to learn as we go because the people who are running for office want the best for Pensacola. And so it's about the leadership and that person in that role, that mayor, to be able to pull everybody together and be able to say, okay, this is where we're going and, and be able to do it. I, uh, it. This is modeled on the federal system that mm -hmm. we have where you have the legislative body and you have the executive body there. So it's going to be a very, very exciting time. Now, you mentioned this, this on this new form of government. How is the president chosen of the council? Uh, the president would be chosen from the council members, the peers. Their peers were just as I was selected as deputy mayors from my peers. That is an honor. Just definitely, I'm just so humbled by their confidence in me. And so the president of the council will be selected from the the council members. And remember, there will be only nine because the mayor does not have a vote on the council like it, like it does now. So um, what kind of things, I think you guys, tell people, I, I think a lot of people are not at council <laughs> meetings, maybe because they don't know when they are mm -hmm. and, you know, what they have to do when they come, like if they want to talk. You know, I think this is an opportunity, Jewel, because you you have a ton of knowledge up there in that little brain. Just because you're quiet doesn't mean that it's not up there. I think mm -hmm. you need to kind of help us understand if we, you know, our council better, especially when the meetings are, mm -hmm. and how uh, can, um, individuals can participate. Well, uh, we ha I, I think we have one of the, the best methods now. We have lots of volunteers that sit on boards for the city of Pensacola, whether it's the Human Relations Commission, whether it's the CMPA board, whether it's the Human Services board, planning board, zoning board, we have boards. And citizens can volunteer to participate in those. If they have a concern, the city council meeting, normally the standard meetings, but when we have such large agendas or we have summer sessions or anything, uh, sometimes we have special days, but normally it is the second and fourth Mondays of the month. Those are the committee meetings. Those are where we, uh, where you hash out everything, where you have a long debate. We have had six seven-hour meetings, people. I know that's discouraging, but come down anyway. <laughs> come down anyway. And so that's where we hash out everything, doing those committee meetings on Monday. 3.15, if they're going to change the time, they normally let you know, but come down 3.15 and participate. You don't have to fill out a card on the committee meetings, but uh, if you call me or any council,